Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Jonathan, and we're Tiny Shiny Home. We are sharing our family's journey of building an off-grid desert homestead and hope to inspire you to create a more sustainable life. Two years ago, we built this incredible hyper adobe earth bag solar shed office with no construction experience. Millions of people watched the full build and we were so excited to have the project completed. But since then, this little shed has leveled up in a few important ways. Let's take a look at our upgraded solar shed. For those of you that missed the original build, we'll recap exactly what this structure is. This is a nine foot by 14 foot rectangle intersected with a 10 foot circle. We use 3,400 linear feet of hyper adobe tube netting and a 12 to one dirt to Portland cement ratio. The whole project required us to move 80 tons of dirt, clay and sand and took us 11 months to complete. So why did we build it? We needed a climate controlled area for all of our solar gear, a place for family and friends to visit, as well as an office for you. And we wanted to practice natural building techniques with the material on our property. So what exactly did we change? Well, we didn't change anything on the inside. It turns out that actually worked out exactly the way we wanted it. We loved the plaster and the earthen floor and the setup and just the way it feels. It was great. But the outside, that's a whole nother story. The first thing we added to the solar shed was rainwater catchment. That had always been the plan, but money and other projects, it just got pushed down on the priority list. Last year, we moved our tiny shiny home to its final resting place in this amazing metal truss carport with its own rainwater catchment system. So that meant our original tank was finally free to be moved. We set up gutters on the solar shed, reset the tank and rebuilt our solar pump house, which now drip irrigates over 70 trees on our Berman swale that goes the entire length of our six acres. And by the way, that was another really cool project. So if you're interested, you should check it out. The Airstream cover was a great place to move our deep freeze to. So we repurposed the back patio for our layman's hand washer using the water from our catchment tank. The second big upgrade actually came from a really big failure. Like we mentioned, we're pretty new to this whole natural building thing, so we had used Cal Earth's recommendation for a cement stabilized soil earthen plaster. Turns out that that mix is no match for the insane weather events we get here in the high desert of Cochise County. Everything seemed good for about a year, but our first sign of trouble came from a hailstorm. See, we get crazy winds. Rain doesn't fall here, it attacks vertical surfaces because it blows sideways. And so does hail, apparently, which it decided to put a bunch of like bullet holes in that exterior plaster. This caused water to seep behind the final plaster coat. And between the hard freezes in the winter and the 100 degree days in the summer, it started to separate from the base coat, which was a cob mixture. Each driving rain began to slowly rip more and more of the plaster off until the south and west walls had an alarming amount of the original Hyper Adobe bag showing. Now the good thing is the bags are tough, they're UV treated, so they weren't falling apart. They actually look brand new once we got them cleaned off, but we didn't like having them exposed long term. So our second upgrade for this building is to get those bags covered, this time with a different mix. And before monsoons come. Yes. Since building the solar shed, we've been busy working on two other earth bag structures, a huge chicken garden and a composting toilet outhouse. As soon as we saw the plaster failing, we started doing experiment after experiment on the other buildings, trying to figure out how to protect them in our climate. And we weren't the only ones. Several other folks in the community were also experimenting and trying new things, and we were collectively sharing our knowledge. Together, we finally settled on a better way forward. Fiberglass reinforced stucco covered with an elastomeric waterproof coating. Though we wanted to use as many natural materials as possible, our hope is that this combo will withstand the winds, the rain, the hail, and the temperature swings that we get in the high desert. Thankfully, the plaster on the east and north side of the building were still intact. So we only needed to rip off the south and west sides, then rebuild it with cob, and then apply our stucco. Chasing, I'm sick of making art. It makes 
Today we have to do some cob around the windows. We're yep. going to build up the places that need um, like frames around all the windows and just a few places that are indented more than others. The stucco will definitely crack if it's too thick mm -hmm. uh, when it dries so we want to go ahead and get that, that cob base layer for all the thick parts and then we can kind of come over with that thin layer for the stucco. I would like to get that off real quick and then we can start. Okay, I'm gonna go pet this kid. No, I want it. Today is the beginning of stucco day. Yeah, we're on fast track because like we said, we've entered the unpredictable rainy season. We'll Fingers crossed. see how many bags this takes. We have 27 bags mm -hmm. and we're trying to not buy more bags. Yes, we are. Moving a little quicker than we thought, which is good. So we're gonna reinstall the flashing and keep stuccoing this wall. We might get done today. What are you doing? Tuke? Tuke. Why, why are you in the stucco mixer? the stucco complete, it was time to turn our attention to waterproofing this whole thing with heavy-duty elastomeric paint. Hello. Hi. Before we get started painting, we want to take a minute and say thank you to the Tiny Shining Homies. The Tiny Shining Homies yeah. are the people whose names you see 
Well, just some of them. Some yeah. of the names you see scrolling, and they're the people that support us every single month. We cannot do this channel without the support of our tiny, shiny homies, and we just want to make sure that we say thank you. Of course. We got to do it every single video. So, mm -hmm. I think the names are almost finished, mm -hmm. and I want to see this building complete. How about you? Well, I'm looking at it complete, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, the people want to see it complete. Okay, let's get to it. Okay. Today's the day. Well, one of the days. The first day. Base coat of the elastomeric is going to go on. Our friend Sam is on his way with his sprayer, so we got to get started masking off windows yeah. and other things. It's not stucco. It's Henry. What are you calling it? Henry. <laughs> well, we have bleached the building. A white building. It's so bright. <laughs> You've got white all over yep. your face. I have paint all over. <laughs> Yep. So my next step is I'm going to go up and trim with a brush uh, up to the roof line. So yeah, there's a few and there's a few places down below, just places we didn't want to spray because they were too close to something we didn't want to have white on it. Let that dry and then come back with a color and then take everything off and then, and then we're done. And then what? Easy. You know what this means? What? We are that much closer to starting our house. I know. I'm so excited. Yeah. Okay. One thing at a time. One thing. I gotta paint. Okay. It does look like it could sprinkle, but we're going to do it anyway. Again, this could be the best possible day or the worst possible day to We've do this. We really lucked out with really great weather. Like the yeah. cloud coverage has been great and only tiny sprinkles, so yeah. not a big deal. So this means it should dry pretty evenly. Um, it's supposed to be cloudy most of the day, kind of windy, cooler. I think this is it. I think this is the day. Yep. Last time you'll see it white. <laughs> Good. <laughs> There's something in the moments that we share, and I cannot deny it. I'm holding on to something real, and I will never let go. I will never let go. We are breaking all the rules. Love is uncontrollable. Alright, 
right, we went through one and a half buckets, so we're gonna finish out this other half, two and a half gallons, try to get an extra coat on the south and the west wall since they're the ones who get hit the hardest. You have me, and I have you. That's enough to paint lonesome black and blue. Yeah, I have you, and you have me. That puts a bow up in the sky and tells the rain to cease. We've had up, and we've had down. We've had warm nights, and we've gone round and round. What I know. Good morning, friends. We are back out at the solar shed for our final punch list to get this finished up. So we got to get the elastomeric off of the bottles. We need to fill in all around the base of the building where we kind of dug it out when we were painting. Uh, just a lot of little cleanup stuff that we want to get finished up. We got to redo the flower beds. We're going to get everybody out here, so hopefully it won't take too long. Be nice to have this thing checked off our mental list. One of the downsides of not having gutters on the solar shed for so long is that all the water that ran off the roof hit the ground here and it sunk everything down a lot further than it should have been. So when we put the water tank in, we got about half of it fixed, but now we're gonna try to get the rest of it here at the bottom, filled in with a bunch of dirt and kind of build it up so that it protects the building a little bit. Third and final upgrade of this building is to collect as much water as possible. We do have an overhang over our front door and there is a gutter on it. However, it's not collecting water. Nope, never got connected to anything. Nope. Uh, so that meant if it did rain, we would have to like put a cart or like a container underneath it or else we just get a huge puddle right out the front door. Yeah, no which good. Is no good. So we set up this cute little whiskey barrel. We plumbed right into the top of it, added a spigot so we can do the overflow into the swale and guess what? This means we have a new and improved solar shed. Now, if you've been following our daily videos, you know that protecting the solar shed from the monsoons of 2023 has been one of the last major punches on our punch list before we start our house build. We can't wait to get started and it's gonna be such a special project. We hope you'll follow along as we begin to plan and build our family home. We'll see you soon. <laughs> 